Hello everyone, my name is Heather and welcome to the channel Bookables. Today I'm going to share with you all of the books I read in the month of October. So it's been a trend lately. I think these last three months I read 10 books and so here I am again reading 10 books in one month. If you don't know with my wrap-ups I always start with my least favorite book I read, working up to my favorite. I I will link any review videos I've done down below as well as any vlogs. I think I have a couple vlogs um, this month that I read a lot of these books. Without further ado, let's get into so, it. The first book I want to talk about is one that I was really anticipating that really let me down and that is The Rewind by Alison Wynn Scotch. Um, this one comes out in November I believe and honestly I really did not like it. I'm in the minority here because if you look on Goodreads a lot of people enjoy this book. I did not. So what captivated with me with this whole book was the cover number one, Neck Alley. Number two was the fact that it's set in the year 1999. I was born in 88. I'm a 90s baby through and through. <laughs> I love the 90s and um, it takes place all in one night which I should have known. I don't do good with those books whether it be thrillers, romances, whatever. More often times than not I do not do good with books that take place in one day. I don't know. It's just a thing. I think a lot of people can probably attest to that. So in this book we follow two characters, Ezra and Frankie, both back at their old kind of college stomping ground because their friends are getting married and Frankie is in the wedding party and Ezra is attending and they were really in love in college and they had a big tumultuous breakup and they have not seen each other in 10 years um, and so it's 99, it's like New Year's Eve like on the brisk of Y2K and basically the book kind of starts with Frankie and Ezra waking up in his old college bed and and they both have wedding rings on their fingers and they're like oh crap did we get married last night and they're, so they're basically the whole book trying to re like trace their steps of the night before to try to figure out like how did they get married they shouldn't even be talking because they hate each other and you know things like that the reason why I did not like this book by the way I gave it two stars is the characters the characters were horrible neither one of them have redeeming qualities more Frankie than not like she was just straight up a jerk they were both jerks to each other I did not like them I could care less about their story because of just the way they were I just oh they grated my freaking nerves and that's not to say there's been a ton of books that I've read especially this year with really unlikable characters but I still love the books. I'm looking at you in my dreams I'll hold a knife. Like that book is full of unlikable characters but I still love the book. With the romance I feel like you really have to like the characters because it's a freaking romance you know but these two characters were just they were just horrible. Like I was like why were you even together at one point because you're both just treat each other like crap. But so that was another thing. That was the main thing I did not like about the book was the characters. The second thing was the writing. The writing was just, it wasn't bad, but this book takes place in 24 hours, but it would go like on a tangent of like them, Ezra and Frankie talking now, and then it would go back into a memory and it would be like just it was so full, like here, then, there, now, you know what I'm saying? It was just like very confusing, whereas, and I think it should have been like, a uh, snippet at the beginning of a chapter like then you know 10 years ago of a memory but no each chapter was full of like seven or eight memories within a matter of like one conversation I was like this is just a little bit too much for me to keep up with so I just did not like this book you know take this one with a grain of salt I say all the time but this one especially because the reviews were so good and I'm just the one that's like I really didn't like it so it's my least favorite book I read this month I just Oh, I just I think the main thing was the characters and how awful they were. Next up is Bad Girl Reputation by L. Kennedy. I give this one a three stars. This is my second L. Kennedy book. I feel like I'm just not, you know, I don't jive well with this author. I didn't dislike this book, but it's basically about a character named Jen who is a former bad girl and she's back in town because her mother has passed away and she meets up with, I forget her boyfriend's name, I want to say it's Evan, a kind of boy that she's been on and off again for forever and they immediately like hook up and she's like no I'm trying to change I want to be a good girl and I can't be with you because you're a bad boy and he's like you know what no I'll change and that's the book. It wasn't really that amazing. I just don't think I connect with Elle Kennedy's writing but she has a big fan base. I could see why you know it's good romance things like that. I just don't love it so there's that. Another big old disappointment was A Malice House by Meg Shepard. I read this one in a vlog and I was so excited to read it and it put me in a severe slump like holy crap. Uh, 
<laughs> so this book, I don't even remember the character's name, but we have a main character. She moves back into her father's house called Malice House and he's passed away. He had dementia near the end of his life and he was a famous author. And so he was in a lot of debt too. So she doesn't have a lot of money. She could have sold us things, but kind of went all to to debt collection, things like that. Basically in this book, she finds this manuscript he wrote of like a children's book, but like a very dark, scary children's book. And she's like, hey, maybe I could sell this and, you know, get some money to help with the house and me. And she's also a aspiring illustrator. And she's like, these stories, because they're short stories, would do really well if I drew characters. And so she does that. And then she tries to like, tell her dad's friends about it and then it becomes like a race of getting this manuscript also while Malice House might be a little bit haunted and maybe the stories she's read that her father wrote are kind of coming to life and it sounds really intriguing doesn't it? It wasn't. The last quarter of the book really picked up on that with the whole creepy scary stories coming to life but the first half was so slow that by the time that last quarter of the book came you didn't care about it anymore. I was like uh, it just moves so slow. It was mainly about the character trying to figure out about her dad, also having romantic feelings for her neighbor, also this manuscript, and it was just like a lot of convoluted boring stuff that just didn't make any sense really. And then the last quarter came and it really was like BAM! Full of this really creepy scary stories that did make that sense but it was still pretty good. But by the time it came I was just less interested in it. So I gave it a 3 out of 5. I could probably really put it a 2 out of 5 because I was really disappointed in it. The premise sounded so amazing and it just let me down tenfold. This video is just full of let down means. <laughs> I don't, I know, I hope you know I never go into a book thinking can't wait for you to let me down and break my heart. No, no, no. I want to be, I want to love all the books, but it happens. Next up, we have Sliver of Darkness by CJ Tudor. This is her newest book. It's a collection of short stories, creepy ones, and it's just that. It was good. I gave it a three out of five. It wasn't anything amazing. I think maybe short story collections just aren't my jam anymore. I just don't love them. I will say there was only a few in this short story collection that I really did like. I think I liked Gloria. I want to like I liked one that was very Stephen King s that she even said. But for the most part, they were all kind of unrememberable. I will say that my favorite parts of this whole book was before each short story, she had a, like a little introduction about how she came to write this short story, whether it was one that she was hoping would be a full fledged novel, but it didn't really pan out, whether it be a short story she sold when she first you know came or a character from another book. I was very interested in that. For the most part, this was just kind of okay. I'd say if you're a big CJ Tudor fan, definitely check it out. If you're looking for like really creepy short stories, I would probably skip this one. And I'm a scary cat and there was not one in there that I was like, oh my gosh. So Mm. On to my cozy reads. This month I decided, hey, you know what? Let's read some cozy reads. And I fully blame Olivia from Liv's Library <laughs> because she read some and I was like, I need to buy them. So I like, bought all the ones that she mentioned in her video, which I'll link um, up here and down below. But basically I felt the same about all of them. So I gave them all like a three and a half out of five. The ones that I read were In a Company of Witches by Laura Lee Wallace. I'd say if you're a big fan of Practical Magic, but want a kind of like PG version of it, check this one out. It's like Practical Magic without like the Midnight Margaritas, you know, and the death and all that kind of stuff. But if you don't know what cozy mysteries are, they're mystery thrillers that are tamed down a lot. They're not as scary. They're not as twisted attorney. They usually take place in a small town, have a little bit of romance in them, and that's kind of your cozy mystery. Also, they're very, very short. All these books are like 300 pages or less. This one takes place in a New England town called Even Evenfall. I'm going to follow a character named Bryn, who's a witch. She lives with her two aunts. Like I said, practical magic and basically a murder happens at their inn and they have to solve it. It was cute. I enjoyed it. Three and a half out of five. Then we have A Dark and Stormy Murder by Julia Buckley. This one follows a character um, named Lena who's really obsessed with this thriller author named Camilla um, Graham and she gets an opportunity to be Camilla Graham's assistant and help her kind of ghost write her next novel. So she moves into her really kind of gothic mansion and they start working on the next novel together and again a murder happens. And this one's 
one's really great if you want kind of a dark um this one's really great to read like on a rainy night because it's a little bit more mysterious it's set in a gothic mansion those kind of vibes and then we have Death and Castle Dark by Veronica Bond. This one I think might be my favorite, which I was very surprised by. This one is about a character named Nora who gets a job at this like castle in like, I think it's like in Chicago or like in Illinois somewhere. And she gets to be the in the cast of like this dinner and like murder type of thing, like a murder mystery type of thing where she's a part of a cast where people will come in, buy tickets, have dinner, and they have to guess who the murderer was, you know, but a real murder actually happens. And they have to figure out. It's very kind of clue-esque if you will because it's set in this old mansion. You have a full cast full of characters and we all know I love clues. So I think with Cozy Mysteries I like them but I don't think I can read three back to back like I did. I really think it affected my reading honestly but I could see myself revisiting Cozy Mysteries time and time again. I think especially during the fall. I think fall is like the perfect fall and winter the perfect time to read Cozy Mysteries but they were all cute. I'd recommend them. And we have The Family Game by Catherine Stead and another three and a half out of five. I did go into a lot of detail about this in my recent reads video, but basically this book is about a character named Harriet who gets engaged at the very beginning of this book to a guy named Edward and his family has money, like old school money, like Rockefeller, Carnegie, like old money. So she's never met his family before and so she meets his family and her future father-in-law gives her a tape because she's also a mystery filler writer who's like here's a story listen to it and so she learns some things and she's like oh crap this family's really messed up and they also like to play games and this book oh had so much potential like the last quarter of it I loved could easily be a five out of five but the first half was so freaking slow like Malice House so in this book they played this family loves games they did like a Krampus game which was genuinely terrifying like I was like oh my gosh they make kids play this and then at the very end of the book or on Christmas Eve they do this big scavenger hunt but it's very very creepy which I loved but that all took place within a matter of like a hundred pages and I'm like, why couldn't this whole book be about these games? I could care less about this tape that the father-in-law gave her. I could care less about these secrets. I wanted those freaking games. I wanted to learn more about the secrets of each of the family. That was the interesting part and that's why I wanted this book to be so much better than it was. It's being compared a lot to that movie Ready or Not or something like that um, where it's about a girl she has to play hide and seek, deadly consequences with her future family. And it's, you know, it's somewhat similar to that, but not if the author would have made the like the last quarter of the book, the whole book, I would have been here for it. I would have loved it, but it wasn't. So three and a half out of five it is. Colors of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn. This is basically Golden Girls meets Assassins. And there you go. There's this book. We follow a character named Billy who is about to be 60, which by the way, they treat 60 year olds like really like orthopedic old, old people, which I'm like, you know, she that book for this. I really don't. I'll still complain about that for forever for this book because they really treated 60 year olds like a geriatric patient. And I'm like, 60s still pretty young. Billy, when she was younger, she was hired to be an assassin and she got into a group with all of these girls known as this female assassin group and they're all really good and now they're all retiring so their company's like you know what you did a lot of good killings for us let's send you on this cruise and they're like great and they get there and they learn that hey there's a target here and the target's out to kill all of them. And so basically this whole book is them trying to figure out why the company they've been working for for literally like 30 years is trying to kill them and they're gonna take it down. It was a very fun book, I loved it. It was fun, I gave it a four out of five. Like the only problem I had with it was the way they treated age, like 60 years old. Like they would have to do an immense amount of stretching, which you know I get because I would have to do that. but. They just, I don't know, with the style and the things like that they would wear. And I'm like, this is not very 60 year old, like currently. So I don't, I don't know. Last book I want to talk about is A Cosmic Kind of Love by Samantha Young. I gave this one a four out of five. It was a pleasant surprise. Wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did. This is about a wedding planner named Hallie who is planning this engagement party for this girl named Darcy. And she's like, hey, send me some ideas for your engagement party and Pinterest boards. And Darcy's like, sure. And so she sends it to her, but accidentally sends these NASA files of like video files of her ex-boyfriend. I think his name's Chris. 
I'm sorry, of him on the NASA space station, like just, you know, when him and Darcy were dating, like, hey, all these things, obviously they're broken up because Darcy's getting married to someone else, but Hallie is very intrigued by this guy because she's like, he's cute, he's funny, I'm gonna send a video diary back. And so she does that and the email gets pinged back, like return to sender, and she's like, you know what? This is a good cathartic time for me, so I'm just gonna keep doing it because no one's gonna see it anyway, but he sees it. I think his name's Michael. And basically, throughout a twist and turn of events, they meet, love happens. It's a super cute love story. Like, some romances are steamy and hot and heavy, and then some romances are just really cute and adorable, and this one definitely follows on that side. I really enjoyed it, four out of five. Definitely my favorite Samantha Book Young I've read. Definitely my favorite Samantha Young book I've read thus far. So there you have all of the 10 books that I read in the month of October. Like I said, it wasn't an amazing reading month for me quality-wise. Quantity, pretty good, but quality, eh, I'm hoping November or December will be better for me, but I've noticed that the 10, like near the end of the year, my like kind of reading spirit kind of phase and then it really ramps up around January because new releases, new books, new year. I don't know, I can't be the only one that feels that way. But I would love to know if you've read any of these books, if you heard about them, and things like that. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!